Oh, that's not everybody. Uh, okay. Um, today, oh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, this concept of who's right, and it seems very basic for all of us because it just seems like something that's just inherent. You know, there's a right and there's a wrong. But uh, my past experience at the this this conference in Tucson really opened my eyes to this new, uh, I guess, wave of thinking that is, in my mind, very destructive and very deteriorative to the religion. And it's about, you know, who's right. So, for example, when I would go there, aside from all the other things that I've told many of you about when I was there, um, you know, the bashing and whatnot, when, I, when we would get into a discussion, certain replies would be given inherently just as a defense or, or, uh, or, or a rebuttal. And the th one of the two main things I would hear on a consistent basis was, what makes you think you're right? And why are you so arrogant for you know, thinking that you're right? And the other one was, don't force your opinion. Now, uh, this idea, the, I didn't understand exactly why they were saying this, but this idea is based off of uh, not having to deal with, you know, any kind of, like, basically what I'm saying is any time, like, you have an argument, they can just pull this card and say that who's right, and then uh, they can just point it back at your ego and saying that uh, you don't have, a, you know, you, you, if, you, if I give into your opinion, you're basically giving into your ego, this kind of a thing. So there's two schools of thought now. One, that we should have one understanding, and there is one absolute truth. And the other is that there's multiple ways of seeing things, and this is actually being promoted as a way of thinking and submission. Now, here's the problem with this idea of, you know, satisfying this urge of people having different ways of understanding the religion and letting this actually uh, prevail within the, within the community. When you start encouraging multiple understandings as something that brings individual, like individualism, it creates a lot of problems in, in submission and, and religion. Number one, when it talks about the best community in 3110, it says we advocate righteousness and forbid evil. How can you advocate for, uh, righteousness and forbid evil as a community if everyone disagrees on what that is? Some, Mr. X says, I believe this is advocating this, like don't, don't steal, for example. Everyone says, well, I says you don't steal, but you can steal that. It becomes a mishmash of all these advocations, and, there, and there's no unity in that very basic trait of, a good, of a, the best community. So it's in our best interest to be that community by striving for that one understanding. Rather than when you tolerate multiple understandings, there is no unity as far as just that basic trait that that community should have. The other one is, the, in, order, in order for this community to work and not give into the bickering and have their peace, they have to avoid the disagreements because if you constantly are disagreeing, it goes into arguments and et cetera. We all know that path. But in order for them to, you know, have this, uh, you know, multiple understanding setting in, in comfort, they have to avoid the controversy. And people don't like controversy, obviously. Like, oh, why are we arguing? Why are we talking about this? But sometimes these things are necessary because... You have to hear both sides. We're here to hear both sides. You can't put your fingers in your ears and say, I don't want to hear it. God determines what we hear. So as the best community or a good community, we have to be able to be transparent and talk about the issues. Now, in, in this multiple understanding setting, they would push, avoid the controversy. Don't force your opinion on someone else. So inherently, what happens is this, this, this topic becomes controversial because of Mr. X. Don't, don't talk about it. He'll get hurt. Mr. Mrs. Y doesn't like this topic, so it becomes controversial. Eventually, you can't talk about anything. And it becomes what? In 670, it becomes a social function. Why are we all getting together? Because we like to say the slogan of worship God alone, but when we have to talk about what it means, we don't even want to talk to each other because somebody will get annoyed or you're forcing your opinion. Now, this whole idea of certain phrases they say like, who's right? They point the finger at you. They blame you for thinking that you have an answer. They attribute it to you. But we know that this is not about us. We know our opinions are dangerous. We want to follow the truth. So this is a trick. 
And another one of the tricks from the devil is don't force your opinion. The reality of it is nobody in the, the years that I've been going to conferences and talking with people about these subjects, no one, I don't have a gun when I'm talking to them. I don't have a knife. I'm not going to do a jujitsu move on them. The reality of it is, is that they're saying, I don't like what you're saying. I'm annoyed by it. So they jump to hyperbole or exaggeration and they say, don't force it on me. You are victimizing me with your words. You're victimizing me with your understanding. I don't want to hear it. But the reality of it is, they should, they should really say, I'm annoyed by you. I don't like what you're saying. And if it's the truth, like, you have no right to it. That's what, this is what's being said. And if we are comfortable with everyone having their own understanding about the law, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, why, why are the angels three, four, you know, the, the wings are different numbers. I'm not talking about these things, things that have to do with our salvation, the law, what makes us righteous. These are the things I'm talking about. If we all agree to disagree, which is some things the believers never do. This is what the, we say to the disbelievers. We're telling, we're trying to, and there's this idea of thought that is promoted in submission now that we should treat each other like disbelievers. Say we agree to disagree, like in Surah 109. We can't do that. And, and, and another, the last thing about it that what it destructively does to us is we, we are not, there's no distinction anymore. We're not a community that tries to distinguish ourselves with uh, the law. Uh, what happens is we become what we were before. We're just a crowd of, of uh, indecisiveness. We become uh, a, just a group of people that we don't agree on uh, like the, this absolute truth. We become, you know, what do we become? We become what got us here in the first place. Now, I would talk, another thing that would happen when I would talk to people about this thing, like, so what is it and they would say, you're going too far. It's not, we, we just don't come here and uh, we don't agree on anything. There's the minimum requirements. So I said, okay, let's talk about the minimum requirements. The minimum requirements are 262. Believe in God, you all know it. Believe in the hereafter and lead a righteous life. And they throw it around very nonchalantly uh, and they put it as a rebuttal to people saying that, no, we have to be strict with the law. We have to advocate the law. But think of, they, didn't, they never have thought about what, is this, what are these requirements entail. It's not as easy as you think. Believing in God, number one, you know, this is not just lip service. We know the devil believes in God. The devil is going to hell. So what is believing in God? Believing in God in his qualities in 817, and, in the, and it's described in the footnote. So believing in God is huge. When, you, when, we give, when they give speeches or they talk about God that undermines his qualities, do you believe in God? Do you fulfill this requirements? This number one. Number two, believing in the hereafter. When they, uh, we know about this stuff, people who don't you know, say the shahada correctly, this is described to us, people who aren't certain about that. And the last one, leading a righteous life. How do you lead a righteous life? According to what the, the, law, the statute book we have, the law, the Quran. We have to understand how to do this in order to lead a righteous life. So the commandments are so important just to meet these minimum requirements. So they say like, oh, the minimum requirements. Like they're nothing. It's huge. We have to work hard to redeem ourselves. We can't just say, oh, I'm good with these three. We have to be on top of the ball. <laughs> so they would say to me, okay, that still doesn't prove how you're right. And well, let me tell you something. Everyone thinks they're right. Everybody. Now, the only thing that can save us by God's grace is if we are, if God says in 823, if I see a little bit of good in you, I will guide you. And that goes back to our sincerity in 5679. And our sincerity is between us and God. If we are the kind of people that we will accept the truth no matter what, no matter who tells it to us, no matter where it comes from, it doesn't matter. We will, if it's from God, we will believe in it. These are sincere people and God tells us that they strive for that understanding and they will get it. These people, when they say that you cannot have the same understanding, it's not possible, they don't believe that you know God will give it to you if you're sincere, and they don't, and they and when they say that the Quran is uh, straightforward, they don't mean it. They, the Quran has no ambiguity, and they they don't mean it when they say you can't reach the, reach the same understanding. They are saying, oh, the Quran has no ambiguity, but it's ambiguous. You won't be able to. There's no way we can all agree on it. What does that mean? It's a contradiction. Is it ambiguous or it's not? Do, is it something that we all can uh, understand and it's straightforward if we're sincere? 
If the answer is yes, then we should absolutely strive for that. We can't say like, you're asking too much, that you want everyone to understand the same. Don't we want this? We want to strive together to come to this because we all want to be sincere and we believe in the absolute truth. This, this is, this is uh, you know, this is what they're telling me. That, oh, we can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> I just wanted to laugh, you know. <laughs> and this idea that Satan pushes, that our opinions make us individuals. Our opinions is what made us rebels. We have to get rid of our opinion. And uh, <laughs> now they, there's this idea of entitlement too and sincerity eliminates this idea of entitlement if you're sincere you know that you are you have to be as critical as yourself as you are on anything so there there's a formula that god gives us to ensure our sincerity we are constantly examining ourselves we're open-minded to the chance that we could be wrong but if you're open-minded to the chance you could be wrong you'll always find what's right this is what god tell, promises us if you are always looking for the truth god will show it to you if you have if you don't have that bias that opinion. So we don't have to worry as long as we're honest with ourselves. We examine ourselves constantly. So they would say you're saying you're entitled, that you know what's right, this and that, but it's not being uh, self-righteous. That's another thing that they would accuse you of. You're self-righteous. You think you know what's right no matter what. A self-righteous person is not someone who thinks they're right. Every, then everyone's self-righteous. A self-righteous person is somebody uh, who doesn't think they can be wrong. Now, if we are critical of ourselves, then and we can and we can see that we could be wrong, then we're always willing to come to a logical agreement, and God will ensure that for us if we take these steps and be critical of ourselves. And then, when we're critical of ourselves, we're well, we're open to criticism, to criticism as a community, and we will just we will grow. The minute we get averse to hearing something, that's when we start. That's when we start to give into deterioration. And the solution is this individualism of opinion. The Quran consistently talks about opinion in a negative light. What we need to do is when we know something is from God, we hear and we obey. All the controversies that I have seen throughout my life as a submitter, like the four meets, for example, these concepts that come out, like sacrifice can only be dedication. When did the messenger explain that? Where is that in the Quran? See, if we think about these things, if we just hear and obey, Whatever is explained to us, whatever is said in the Quran, we will be fine. When, when we think about like where these things get derived from, it's when there's a dispute, is there's an opinion somewhere. Now these standards we need, we need this standard to advocate righteousness and forbid evil. So these standards we have to, as a community, come to like discuss and understand that there is a law that we have to promote in 3933. The absolute truth is the Quran, and we promote this with confidence. Don't let someone tell you that don't think you're right. If you have done your due diligence, if you've studied the Quran carefully, if the Quran is not ambiguous, if you, if you have confidence in the Quran that God has given you, great. Don't let anyone deter that from you, because this is a blessing from God, and uh, knowing right and wrong is not is is something that is a is a is a gift. It's the guide. It's the right. It's a guide to the right path to heaven. There is only one path to heaven: the right path. Guide us in the right path. There, there this multiple path thing is going to hell. There multiple understandings. It's 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 this is this is the, the the devil's trick. It sounds good, but it's not true. Like this tolerance of disbelief. Remember in eight twenty five, a community that tolerates homosexuality may be a hit. We want to tolerate this. We can be hit too. We have to be firm on the side of God. And this is not to say that we're all going to come to the same understanding in one night. I'm not saying that. We work toward it. We strive to uh, understand. And this, is a, and this is a process that we do through life. But as I said, if you are sincere, we will all reach the same level of understanding because we're all going to, God willing, be on the same path. And, 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 and that's it. And the, the, the strongest evidence that God has given us to prove to others and to ourselves that we're doing right is the, the, the world around us and the fruits we produce. When someone says to me, like, how, you, how I still won't ever, like, you're arrogant, you think you're right, yada, 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 they attribute it to you rather than understanding this is a truth from God. Say then, okay, well, wait. 
If I'm right, you can see the rewards of my life. God will reward me. God will show me in my life. I will have a good and happy life according to the Quran. And you can look at your own. We'll see who's right. And this is a challenge that is made to the disbelievers. They, they call for God to say, bring the retribution. And, then, and, we're, and we know that we do what's right. Our lives will get better and better. And this is our indicator. And this thing cannot be something that's subjective. When you're with God, your life gets better and better. And this is when you know you're right. That when you're doing the right thing, your life is great. It's your, it's your, it's your who said it, litmus test, right? Lit, I mean, you know. <laughs> so let's, God willing, as a community, let's strive to uh, uh, have this, the same understanding about God's laws because it's an absolute law and there's one absolute God. And thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Salam run over here. Okay, don't worry about it. You don't have to find me. Um, so, uh, it, I'm I'm right here. I'm sitting. Okay, you, you literally are in the wrong direction. Oh, you're just looking. In the oh, there direction. you are. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm right. Oh, there you are. Okay. You know what? I'll stand up. All right. So I um, can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I didn't need you to find me. Um, so. We went to the same conference by God's grace, yeah. and we saw saw a lot of things. Um, there was this idea that I thought was, I mean, personally, I thought that was very dangerous, and that was relative truth. Um, and if you can, please explain um, that concept of relative truth and how um, it is something that is not Quranic and not in any way something that we can follow as submitters altogether. Right. Um this idea of relative truth can also be called a personal truth. Everyone was advocating hard this idea that when every time we had um, an argument, as you recall, they would, they would pull the personal truth card. It's like, well, that's your truth. That's your truth. It's like, well, look, well fair enough. But it, like, if, if so, we have an understanding about something, couldn't it be the truth? And is it, is it something that is, in, is ambiguous that we all can't agree on? This is what they were pushing. So this relativism about that it's, it has a foundation of that you have to be satisfied with this relativism because there's no way that you can, you know, all agree. They, this is just across the board. They're saying relativism is the truth, that everyone has a personal truth and you can't, and the, you putting it on to other people is fruitless because everyone uh, shouldn't even like hear it because it, it, there's no point. It's pointless in their minds. But the truth of the matter is, is that, the sincere will recognize the truth as they recognize their own children. And we have to promote it with, with confidence because we know that it is a truth from God, not from us. So this idea of relativism they have is a trick from Satan to dilute anything that is concrete to, uh, by pulling this card that it's subjective. It's something that you thought of. It's something that you understand with your intellect. But it's, it's, uh, the reality of it is, is we give up our opinion and we accept what is true, and that's the way it works. It's not something that is within us. There's a truth out there that we want. So this is the thing that they don't like and they don't understand. So this relativism is the devil's trick all the way. So Ron, over here. <laughs> <laughs> So I just a simple question, was there anybody there that had an open mind willing to listen? Just curious. I, f I think that there were people that were there that were, they, they didn't have the history that a lot of us know and, uh, and are, 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 are aware of that would put a lot of like b background into why people were saying these, these cer certain things. But they were, uh, you know, they were sitting on the outskirts of whatever was going on all the time and I would see them. But the whole time, ra rather than address the issues, which would, which would submitters do, they talk about whatever is pressing at the moment. So we strive for that understanding of God's law because it's so important. Because if we uh, interpret one of God's laws uh, the wrong way, we can, we, we can uh, hurt ourselves tremendously. And we maintain that we might even go to hell. So these people, they wanted to avoid the concepts 
and uh, just attack our character. But the, and the neutral people saw that. So yeah, I saw people who were uh, neutral on the outside. I can't say that you know they were open-minded to the point where they would receive the, everything. But I knew that there was you know you know they they saw that the agenda of the of the opposition. I know they saw that as much, at least that much. But they saw that they wanted to avoid the issues and just defame our character. So they saw that. But as far as the open mindedness about the whole thing, I don't know. God knows. Don't know. So, Rod, as you stand there making many an ovary skip a beat, can you <laughs> tell me about the relationship between um, the this this many truths? versus the discard of 49.1, as we heard there. Right. So this idea of many truths is uh, just a, another, another way of uh, giving into the opinion. Just, uh, the, the, the de I feel like the devil, when he can't get people with certain kinds of terminology, like no one's going to tell you, give into your opinion. So they come up with this, uh, you know, these alternative, uh, this alternate vocabulary to make it sound more appealing, but in 49.1, when we uh, when we you know don't put our opinion above God and His messenger, we uh, that's the, we give up our opinion. Once we know someone has the authority, you know God says they examine the, all the words and and pick the best. Once we and a sincere person does that. Once we verify that this is God's messenger and this is a message from God, whatever is the the solution is, we hear and we obey. And never a solution in the Quran that says. Think about it, use your opinion, weigh things be utilitarian. It says no. Once you know this is from God, you hear and you obey. You don't try to be innovative. You don't think about it like you're, you know, you know, you know, Einstein or something. Well, you know, what is the universe like? No, you 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 say, yes, sir. Because when your when command when your creator gives you an order, you say, yes, sir. This is the way to get back. You are given a map. You don't say, oh, let me find my own shortcut. Like which way? Let me go through the mountains and see where this takes me. Uh. <laughs> Uh, so I was at this same, here I am. <laughs> I was at the same conference and I heard a lot of accusation of San Jose being a cult yeah. uh, because they have the same understanding. And my argument with them, with them was, are you calling the angels cult? Are you calling God the cult leader now? Because angels all, all have the same understanding. Are you not going to, this is all we have to aspire to get the same understanding, to be like that. And somebody said, oh, we're not angels. I said, well, we are still trying to get to that same level. So we are not called. We should get to the same understanding. There's only one truth, and one understanding. <clears throat> I just want to know about... Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know about, did you talk uh, about any specific serious issue, which is like, um, they are the same submitters community, and we are the submitters too, and we try our best, 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 to the will of God, to solve this problem. This is a big tragedy right now going on between two communities. So is there any specific, like a serious things going on because, uh, about that you think we cannot solve with them and there's no solution for that? Um, if I understand your qu question correctly, is, if, is there a solution to you know, the pro like any kind of dispute or problems that we have between submitters? Uh, if submitters, I believe their, qual their characteristic is that they're always willing to uh, strive for one understanding and you know and because they want to please God and understand the way that will lead them to the right path if we all share that and there's always a chance the minute though somebody says I don't want this uh, effort to reach uh, this understanding of the absolute truth and I don't want to be on this journey with you and there is no uh, then there's no way correcting it I heard from certain individuals that they prefer to agree to disagree and remain in the opposition on certain fundamental laws and submission that it's, they're basically saying my mind is made up. So what do you do when somebody doesn't want to talk about the issue anymore? You, you've become, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, there's so, there, 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 there's so many. <laughs> 
uh, just the one about uh, just about messengership, for example, you know, or or anything, but like any of the you know, the role of the messenger, uh, perfect happiness, insurance, the dietary prohibitions, all these, uh, you know, and in huh? the smoke prophecy, the mathematical miracle being a research in progress, all these things. If if we're willing to talk and come to an unbiased logical agreement, because the Quran is not ambiguous. And the proofs are proofs for those who can see. If we share these qualities, then we'll be, able, we'll be able to reach that. But if someone says, I've had enough to use your way to my I don't want to hear anymore. This is things you hear. And then people keep telling me, keep trying. It's like, well, it's like a marriage. If, like, if, if somebody doesn't want to stay married to me, I can't say, oh, no, I'm going to keep going over to her house. <laughs> just, just, uh, we're done, you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> her house, because it, it'll be her house. <laughs> so yeah, that's. <laughs> Can I go? Yeah, uh, Rod, right yeah. here. <clears throat> oh, nice. Uh, so, for example, if let's say I see perfect happiness different than you. Um, like Maria asked, uh, for example, let's say I see that perfect happiness is that uh, it doesn't matter what happens to your body, and this body is just a garment, and it can be plagued with diseases or whatever, and it's a state of mind that counts. Let's say I have this understanding, um, and I'm kind of firm on this. Why can't you just accept that? Um, why do you have to necessarily... Um, quote unquote, impose the other understanding on me? Why can't you just say, okay, well, you can have this understanding and, and um, that's fine. How come you can't be united with me if I have that sort of an understanding? Um, isn't everyone entitled to their, to their opinion? Yeah, everyone is entitled to their opinion. But like you said, if, you, if what unifies us is our understandings of, of God's qualities and the, the laws that he has established would show that we accept his absolute authority. So if someone's saying that God cannot back up his guarantee, which was indisputably dis uh, described by the message in the covenant, without, and there's no dispute, of, you can't dispute that he was saying that there's no problems, perfect help. These are, these, we have these on record. So if someone's disputing that, they're, they're going against, you know, this information directly. It's not ambiguous. And the Quran talks about this too, and it was, uh, it, uh, and they're confirming. It's confirmed. They're confirming each other. It's it's a fact. So someone who goes against this, they are entitled to it. We're in America. You can be whatever you want. But if you want me to, under the guise of submission, say that we're united, it's just not true. And I'm doing a disservice to the 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 foundation of the religion by tolerating that. It has the what the truth that has been given to us. There's a verse that says that the keeper of God's laws. And we uphold this. Once we start to tolerate different uh, promotions of the truth or, or the, the laws, that's when uh, the, the religion deteriorates tremendously. So it's in, it's, on our, it's in our duty to stand up for what's right. And, uh, this, and, and it's not about freedom. People have the freedom. Of, you can go join some whatever uh, thing you want to do. This is a fr freedom of religion is a Quranic uh, principle. But we're talking about what comprises submission. What is the one true religion of God? What does it say? What is God's promise? It's totally different. The devil tries to conf confuse in issues and convolute things. If I don't accept someone's understanding, it's not even understanding, it's opposition to perfect happiness, uh, they say that uh, I'm give taking away their freedom. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I have the right to disagree <laughs> and not be united with that person. <laughs> Yeah, that's my freedom. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Can you, Rod? Can you see me? Yeah, I have. A, <laughs> I'm hiding. <laughs> you can't see me because I. Have a, so, you, you seem to know more about marriage before getting married. Oh um, no no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. My question is: um, You said if we know the truth, and if we support the truth, and if we proclaim the truth, and um, we can see the comparison between our life and the life of others who don't promote the, the truth. So what I see is that 
obviously mashallah we our life definitely um, takes a very good positive turn and we see so many uh, growth in our life but those who don't promote it it's it's not um, it's not happening immediately because those people who are who are in the you know, opposing us opposing the truth opposing god's messenger are still are um, i'm seen them in a materialistic world they are really still successful so how do you see that the that difference you know what i'm saying yes okay don't take the example of any marriage <laughs> thanks i won't use marriage anymore you're right i <laughs> know uh, i see um uh god shows us through our li- uh, through our lives and through the lives of uh, others uh that what what progression or regression we're taking i see that everyone's given a lifelong chance obviously and uh these apparent successes that we see god tells us that these become a source of misery for them and you know we know that people who disbelieve they're provided for by god and they have temporary enjoyments but it's true it's not an immediate effect but and the quran talks about uh how you know uh you know the more the more you abide by god's laws the better your life gets and that of course is also an, a process it takes us a while to purify ourselves and get to that level and with the disbelievers is the opposite the closer they get to the end of their lives the, the mis- their misery becomes more and more saturated and uh 2124 it says it, the miserable life for a disbeliever is unavoidable so we may it says we may be uh impressed by their parents success but all their money their children all these things because they're dependent on them and it gets ripped away uh it it's a source of misery from them for them imagine like this person's god was his uh you know his looks or his money and toward the end of his life he is is not good looking anymore and he can't spend anything because he can't do anything anyway he, you know he's he's lost all of his abilities he loses the illusion the thing that he uh you know loved so much it's just it's uh his psychologically is unhappy and this he finds out that is unfulfilling in this world too and god tells us that if we do this we can see you know in our own lives like you said especially that's what we care about that you know uh we will be happy but we will also see we also see the disasters around us we can't you know uh not we see the satan's kingdom around us we can't deny that but yes for we're given a chance as for the the disbelievers but the longer and longer you maintain that stance uh the more and more you head toward heaven or hell here Am I done? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> not yet. First of all, I want to thank you very much. Thank God for having somebody like you to enlighten people like us and those. God is running everything. We know that. And the people like you when they you go there and you start to the talking to the so-called oppositions, it's a plan from God to guide somebody who is who are supposed to be guided because God wants them to be guided. So it's not you it's not you are a tool that God you and others you were a tool that God wanted to be sent over to make them understand and whomever is who deserves to understand understands like my sister here. And whoever is not God is telling us even if the worst disaster happens to them they won't get it. And we know there are some of them that it happened to them and they didn't get it so we're going to give up with them inshallah and we're going to continue doing these things with people like you so smart and young and understandable and submission submitted inshallah till the truth becomes uh, to the point that everybody is a community that you started at the beginning a community that they uh, teach the, the the submission to the rest of the world inshallah Thank you very much. Am I wrapped? Yeah, no, no, one more question. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So yeah, um some people um I've heard that <laughs> anyways, I know for a fact even that conference many uh people do not agree with each other. So that is that tells you something so that they are not united i believe that t- only truth unites us uh, otherwise we have seen when there were a lot of hadiths and people followed different um paths um traditionally there were hundreds of sects um so if they only had followed one source um they would have muslims would have been united today 
Um, so I have heard there was a belief that um, if you follow um, any kind of um, audio or video by Rashad, you're actually misguided. Did any? Did you hear anything about that? Did you comment um, on such a blame or anything like that? Uh, yeah, this is something that uh, we have been hearing throughout the years where they want to discredit certain forms of information just because of the medium they're on. Uh, and there's some people who reject it altogether, which I don't even know what they're doing there. But uh, as, as far as uh, the, the forms of information, whether it's audio or video or whatnot, we have it recorded. And the fact that these people compare it to a hadith or discredit it is just their, their is an utter lack of knowledge about what hadith is, how they're fabrications. And Muhammad never even said these things. And uh, the Quran says that he was... Uh, he was forbidden from explaining it. So if somebody understands the role of the messenger, uh, it would do them a great, uh, it would be, it would do them a great, it would enlighten them greatly to understand this so they can uh, just say we hear and we obey. The people who still object to the information from the messenger, they really haven't believed the message yet. That's just, that's the bottom line. Yeah. 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 Pretend he doesn't see me. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, you see me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when they stand uh, up, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, um, uh, my name is Edward. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, I have a question about how do we not tolerate and still maintain righteousness? Um, and I, I agree on a lot of things you say. Um, I think you're right about a lot. Uh, funny thing is I've been called intolerant, <laughs> divider, argumentative creature, troublemaker, <laughs> all because if I see something that I think is wrong, I would say it's wrong. Or, and if somebody makes a comment, I would, if I thought that, you know, differently, I would say it. And then I figure if you can talk, I can talk. This, you know, freedom of religion in here for us, for, for our religion. We have the freedom. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. How do we be tolerant? Uh, how do we be not tolerant? Right. Um, the t tolerance is very important. I, I think maybe I should have even, uh, I should have discussed it more in the in the, in my in the speech. But uh, we ca we cannot tolerate disbelief as belief. That just can't happen. We and we have that uh, example of Lot's wife, you know, and the and the the footnote of eight twenty five saying if we tolerate homosexuality, for example, as something that is moral you may be uh, prone to the same retribution that may befall others. So we have to be strict in uh, what is the truth, but we are tolerant of people to get there. As long as they're willing to, get the, to work to get there, they have the potential, they're neutral about it. In other words, they're willing to discuss it. We always tolerate that. We always tolerate someone trying to work to a common understanding of God's laws because it's, there's, it's the sincerity that the, the two, two people share. But we cannot tolerate giving up and agreeing to disagree as something that is, you know, God's one religion. We can't do that because that's compromise. We can't agree to disagree about the law. There, if someone agrees that alcohol, uh, you know, intoxicants are abominations of the devil, but they have a problem giving into it sometimes, I will tolerate them as long as they're working to get back even. But they, we have to agree on the principles. They can't say alcohol is good or something like that. They can't tolerate that. Awesome. Thank you.